Hey, it's Michael Lafito. In this video, we want to talk to you about best practices when pre-screening, pre-qualifying buyers for your high-end and unique properties, when there's an agent involved on the other side, or when there isn't an agent involved. Just a reminder, if you're getting value from this video or other videos or our podcast, please leave us a like, leave us a review. Again, we are producing tons of content out there and we want to hear from you. My contact information is below. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover or talk about, please let us know. All right, so let's talk about pre-qualifying, pre-screening potential buyers on your high-end and unique properties. Again, every part of the country is a little bit different where there might be lockbox and then you remove lockboxes above a certain price point in the Chicagoland market. Um, I would say $2 million and above. Definitely there's no lockboxes, maybe a little bit lower in some communities, but that varies in every marketplace. Same thing with pre-qualifications. At some price point, a pre-qualification is more common than not in, in your market or other markets. So obviously you wanna be consistent in whatever you do. So if the seller requires pre-qualification, pre-screening, you want to be consistent, whether it be a past client, whether it be another agent that you worked with, another agent you haven't, or if this is a cold call or internet lead, you want to be consistent. Obviously, you want to treat everybody fairly and the same, no matter what the situation is. So if they're working with an agent, do you have a relationship with that agent? You certainly will want to ask them for a pre-qualification letter, a letter from a CPA, a banker, maybe a bank statement. They can redact out their bank account information, a letter from a CPA, and then let them know that you will follow up and just verify that they, in fact, did read that, or excuse me, they did write that. Or same thing from a buyer that doesn't have an agent. You know, you can, of course, blame it on the seller if you want, but, uh, you know, the seller requires proof of funds, whether it be in the form of a letter from your banker, your CPA, a bank statement, or a pre-qualification letter, just note that we will follow up with them. Now, some things to look for, some red flags to look for in uh, pre-approval letters. Obviously, if it's a bank that is reputable, they can uh, a buyer can be savvy and they could falsify the letter, even if the letterhead looks legitimate. So some things you want to look for. Make sure the, the address of the business is correct. You can go to Google. Number two is you want to make sure there's a website on the pre-approval letter. If not, it's a yellow flag, if not a red flag. And you want to make sure the address that's on the website matches the address that's on the letter. You want to see if there's an email address and contact phone number for the loan officer or the bank that is on the letter. So if there's no phone number or email address, no website, those are all uh, yellow flags. If there's multiple multiple of those, that would be considered a red flag. And you can always ask the buyer if you know what they do for a living, if they don't mind sharing, if they have a and you want to try to get as much information about them to kind of see if they have a digital footprint. A digital footprint would be can you Google them and find out enough about them? And if they don't have um, a pre-approval letter, you can always go back to your seller and say, I know you want a pre-approval letter, but here's this individual. They have a big following online. They have a, a you know company that is well-known, respected. So the more information you have, the better. And provide that to your clients. So worst case scenario, they give the thumbs up or the thumbs down on a showing. So pre-screening, pre-qualifying, you want to be consistent. You know, you can't test drive a Lamborghini without them pulling some information to make sure you can afford it. Same thing with high-end and unique properties. Again, be consistent, okay? Ask qualification questions, but don't, you know, you want to trust, but you want to verify. Trust them, but verify. That's what I'll leave you with. Michael Lafito, trust, but verify. Make it a great day.